paint any more your faces. Okay, here and here. Okay, you can start the recording whenever you want. Uh, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Meeting. We are the 8th of February 2022. So, today, as attendees, we have myself, Hervé, Mark, Tim, and Stefan. Okay. Um, let's get started with the announcement. So last week we didn't have a weekly meeting, but last week the weekly 2003 was released successfully, as far as I remember. At least it's running in production for us on InfraCI. So thanks for the release. Um, this week, there isn't any weekly expected, at least not today and not tomorrow, as far as I understand, because there will be a security release on weekly and LTS. Um, I don't know if we should trigger a weekly Tuesday or Friday. I don't know, Tim, what do you think about that? I no, uh, so there will be a weekly tomorrow. It will be 2.334, but it will be a security release. So it's 2.333 plus just the security upgrades uh, or security okay. changes. So no normal weekly expected, only the security one this week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no form modernize no form modernize okay yeah There's so form, form modernization PR. yeah form modernization first arrives in next tuesday's release right okay yeah the huge pr that was merged on monday yeah and tim any any opinion just for my while we're here any opinion on should we include system d transition in that or should we wait a week after that mm. I think we're probably okay to include system D in, in the full modernization one. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, I, yeah. I marked it as on hold as I didn't want Basil to merge it to master. Yeah, yeah. Merging, it, merging it before the security <laughs> release would be disastrous, right? So that's, that's one, of, yeah, good, okay. Um, about the next week release also, there will be a set of security release for plugins that should happen 15 of February. So I, I took the responsibility to, to say we will delay the weekly to the 6th, uh, 16th of February to Wednesday. There shouldn't be any problem releasing, releasing weekly and plugins the same day. However, given that it's sensitive because security and uh, because we messed up the automatic weekly uh, last time, um, I would prefer to have one thing per day just to be sure it's clean, to avoid any rush. Uh, because if security is late, or if we have mirrors that happen at the mirror synchronization at the same time, they might be weird behaviors resulting on security plugin release before the announcement. So there should be no problem, but better safe than sorry. So the weekly with uh, system system D. And uh, for modernization should happen next uh, for the Wednesday, 16th of February. Tim, that okay for you? Since as release officer, that's probably your uh, your domain to make the ultimate decision. Yep. Is it just it's just weekly, isn't it? Yes. Yep. Right. No LTS is this week, so nothing but LTS. Don't don't care about weekly really. Just whenever okay. it comes. Great. Okay. Thanks. Um, just to say, not it's system D, not system V. System V is the old in it, or it's referred yeah. to something the else. Transitions, is it? So, is that not right? It's maybe okay to include system V in it to system D. Ah, okay, sorry. I misunderstood. Right. Sorry, I was skipping changing it. My bad. <laughs> just, just poor phrasing from the person doing the typing. I fixed the phrasing. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, it's more readable now. I thought that's what you were writing initially, but then I saw the end of it. Yeah, it, it, it's the uh, the non English native era <laughs> that yeah. misunderstood the. Also, the just way. poor phrasing. So there's nothing nothing to do with other than bad phrasing on my part. No problem. 
Um, so these are the three main announcements. Do you have other announcements to make? Okay. So let's proceed on the tasks and notes. Um, first, a priority about the two security releases. So this week, tomorrow, we will have cores only. Um, remember, don't merge anything this afternoon or tomorrow until the security release is done. At least nothing that could have any impact on release.ci or CI Jenkins IO, please. Um, this morning, we took the opportunity to update release CI, infra CI, CI and trusted kernel plugins, everything that was available this morning. So tomorrow, the security team will have a clean state to work with that will avoid them having a zillion of plugins to update and they have to manually select. Most of the time, they don't need to, but yeah, at least we have a clean state for them. Um, once again, the weekly automatic release is triggered automatically. At uh, this time, it's no one's fault. Compared to last time, it's because we had a short notice from the security team that they were willing to have a core release tomorrow. And they were going to stage it Monday. At least I received the, the notification really, really early, or really late. So yeah, uh, but just to be sure, Thanks, Hervé, for the review. We disabled the management of release CI on Kubernetes. So the proposal is that we don't put it back on automatically managed until, uh, until the security release is finished. And we will have to do the same thing next week. Just to be sure there isn't any unplanned reload of the configuration on Kubernetes that will enable again the job. So is there a way we could change the Kubernetes definition such that the job starts is defined disabled during these periods, or that's not, not really uh, workable? There is a contribution to be made on job DSL so oh. that the attribute disabled is exposed on the job DSL configuration and used. Ah, okay. It's, so right now yeah. you can't create with job DSL a disabled job. Yeah, exactly. Part of awesome. the code is already there, but it has to be exposed as an attribute from the configuration. Yeah, like it'd be good to do that. But at the end of the day, we don't really want any change to release.ci. Um, we don't want anyone updating plugins or the image or anything while we're right. anything that could take it down while okay. we're about to do it. Yep. However, I've also had a smart idea that could be um, complementary to that, which will be changing the pipeline for the releases to check for a lock file or not. So that will mean if anyone from infra team or security team commits the log file on the repository. When the automatic weekly trigger starts, if it see the log file, it will stop immediately with a message saying, I got a log file, I should, I'm not expected to trigger weekly. That, that's a simple one that will be manipulated as code and we won't have to care about any Kubernetes reload or job DSL. So say that again, which log file? That sounds interesting. A lock, a lock file. Lock a file. Lock. Ah, yes, sorry. got it. Okay, sorry. Again, uh, now I understand. My bad. <laughs> Perfect. No, so it was it was a file that explicitly says this system is locked, and because this system is locked, do not allow the job. I see. Thank you. Okay, which will be full as code, only restricted to the release pipeline. So releases. CI.jenkins.io could still continue working and being updated without any risk. Right. So that should be a complementary process, but we still need job DSL contribution because disabling jobs is something we need on numerous places. Okay. Uh, so that's why I wanted to mention that part. There is an issue. Um, uh, I've put all the links. And Daniel, yesterday, did the part of the staged, the release part, not the packaging part, only the release. So generating the war and signing it. For the weekly, it worked perfectly. I mean, last week, uh, last weekly, last week worked perfectly. So that was the same code, so that's fine. About LTS, still the same issue. Each time I make a change to the master branch, uh, I forgot about 
I don't know which branch I have. I, I don't understand that. It's really painful for me. So we ended up on the same issue as we had two weeks ago. The jar verified uh, missing from the bin because using a Docker image older than the one on the weekly. Uh, just to be sure, um, Daniel con ver uh, did the, manual, the verification manually like we did two weeks ago and is ready to continue the packaging. But just in case, thanks Tim for reviewing that by the way, um, I've merged the, these changes from the main branch to both stable 2.319, so the LTS branch, and the security new branch. Because as I understand, there is one branch for each patch of each LTS on security releases. Most of the time, they build it from the stable branch. Uh, uh, that's too much for my brain. So I've, I, I did at least two places just to be safe. Uh, if I forgot any target branch, don't hesitate to open the pull request and mention. I suspect we already have a target branch for stable-2.332.1. So it may be worth checking to see if... Is it for the patch on the weekly? No, that's for next LTS, for the March LTS. Okay, so that, uh, that means the error also happened on that one for sure. And I assume that Daniel, oh, it was using an older version of the pipeline set that is still working by any look. It, it has, that, that I, release hasn't been done yet. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't have detected the failure. It just, I suspect there's a okay. stable dash 2.332 branch out there. Okay. Um, who is going to do that part, that staging release? Is it us or security team? I, 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 sorry for clarity. There won't be a security release of 2.332.1 because that's next LTS. That's the March LTS. So there's, okay. Okay. Uh, this yes. is just me okay. forewarning that I think the branch already exists and needs the cherry pick. No, nothing more than needing the cherry pick. Okay. Uh, we have to take care of that. Uh, can I, de I defer that to someone else than me just to be sure that that knowledge is shared? Yes, why not? Sure. So I'm happy to take it or I, I, could, I could pair with Stefan and he and I could do it together. It might be a good experience for the two of us to pair. With pleasure. Okay. So how good. about if Stefan and I take it? Okay. So let me write this down. Yep. Cool. There are still, so, um, so yeah, that, that one was important to have in mind for tomorrow's release. For tomorrow, I don't have any other elements. Do you have any other points for tomorrow's core releases? Okay, just a word for next week. Um, that will happen before our team meeting. That's why I wanted to mention it. Uh, trusted will be uh, needed at, at all costs because it's only plugins. Release.ci shouldn't, however, let's keep it safe. And CI Jenkins IO, of course, because they will need to update the plugins if we have some. I haven't seen the list of plugins impacted by the CVE stuff. So let's assume CI.jenkins.io will be, especially since Vadek asked for the status Jenkins IO. Um, for both releases, I need someone, I can take it, someone can be me, but someone uh, need to update status Jenkins IO to say that CI Jenkins IO might have some restart and unavailability tomorrow and next week, the 15th. Is there someone volunteering to updating status Jenkins IO? Well, yes. since, oh, go ahead. Yes, for the, for the whole day, no, 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 just for, it's, it's a, usually it's a, a, our history says it's about a, it can be anywhere from a 15 minute to a 45 minute downtime. Exactly. And Stefan, if, since Stefan and I are going to be cherry picking on, yeah, on a branch, do why don't we also take that one? Yeah. Because that way he and I can do a, how do you do to, a submission to status? Looks good. Thanks folks. So let's, uh... So that will be for tomorrow's release and next week. So you can do oh, this oh, on right. one pull request. Good, good, yes. Okay. Is there 
Anything else about the security releases this week or next week that you have in mind? No, okay, thanks folks. Uh, next priority topic, Digital Ocean, work in progress by Hervé. Um, Hervé, it seems that locally you successfully created the resources. You were able to run the Terraform process and fix it on numerous levels. Um, it seems that the readme that I originally created for AWS Terraform management needs some a bit of revamp or update at least on the file structure. We had good exchanges about how to build a stronger shared pipeline library for Terraform management and testing and stuff based on uh, uh, the issue that Hervé had locally uh, due to, let's say it's a, the youth of that Terraform stuff. I understand Hervé, can you confirm that you are the CI steps, meaning uh, making the CI jobs working, it's created, but you have to make it work. So it manage digital ocean cluster. Uh, for now, my big issue is the credential uh, for the backend config file, which are uh, which aren't correctly interpreted. Uh, ah, yes. It, it puts the environment variable name uh, inside the backend uh, config file instead of the content uh, referenced by the environment variable name. So I have to manually upload a new version of them each time the um, there is a reload on the config. Yeah. yeah. Tim or Mark, does it ring a bell when specifying a... specifying a credential of type file from Gcask that should be a base64 for an environment variable? And what mm -hmm. happens is that the environment variable is put as content of the credential. So it's correctly encrypted and decrypted when pipeline use and load the credential. But we have to set the multi-line content by ourselves inside Jenkins through the UI because it doesn't work from GCAS. Mm, should work in JCAS, but I mean it's easier if you just avoid this and just use and just use like string variables. I'm not sure if this I'm not sure exactly what's in this file, but um, Normally, if you just do something like a, like in AWS or Azure, you just do TF um, ID equals um, and then and then have the key as like an environment variable. So, like with the Azure, Azure Terraform provider, you can provide files or you can just provide environment variables, and it's not simple. Not for the backend, you must use a file for the backend sport because most of the key are or you have to define all the. Oh. You could define the keys inside the backend.tf yeah. file, but yeah, the Terraform for... init need a file in order to. Have a lock. Yes, it's to have the lock on the backend. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, is maybe this, we have. Like, yep, this... sorry. What, what sorry is... We couldn't. Sorry. Let's is... go, team. Is this for the um, like the S3 bucket or something else? Because looking yes. at the DigitalOcean doc. So it's for S3. It's for and the I'm S3. Surprise. Yeah. It's the same mechanism uh, as uh, AWS, as far as I can see. And uh, yeah. You, you, can on the you can supply it on the command line. Uh, uh, yeah, I can. I think I can. Uh, but I was thinking I can inject this uh, variable uh, via a little bit of script in the beginning of the pipeline yeah. if needed, but. It also says that you can do it via environment variables too. You don't have to use a file, as far as I can uh, tell. Uh, with Terraform 1.1 1 .1 maybe, but not with 1.0. We haven't upgraded to latest minor. I don't think that the stuff doesn't tend to change very often. I mean, we so even if you can't use environment variables, the very minimum you can supply it on the command line. You can go tear from mm -hmm. init dash backend dash config, and then you can supply a set of those. Um, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, also, another clue is that since the content of the backend config for uh, the actual Terraform and the Digital Ocean are almost the same, there is only one change, one key. 
the idea would have been to reuse the existing credential and mm. then only uh, define the key on the backend.tf of DigitalOcean because it's not a sensitive data. Yeah. On, yeah. Only the key is just a namespace for the Terraform state inside the bucket. Uh, that was the thing I had in mind. However, we still have an issue on our setup. And I don't know if it's GCASC, if it's SOPS, if it's the way we inject the contents, but we have yeah. exactly the same SOPS data for both credential. And here you see the configuration inside the CASC configuration passed to the Elm values. And for both, we use the base 64. And in, in, in the, one in case, the zoom it chat, And the, the Zoom set, I have, I've put the error log I've got in the Terraform pipeline. When we, where we can see uh, the content of the file contains only the variable instead of its contents. So that one line 154 works as expected. That environment variable has a multi-line string content coming from SOPS decrypted. And it's correctly base64 uh, hashed. And it's set as a credential that works as expected. But if the digital ocean one doesn't work. Is it, did you say it's just not been substituted as if it's, it's just got the variable there? Yeah, it got, uh, yes. it's uh, the content of backend config in the pipeline. It's literally uh, contains, that. It contains the. The variable name, literally what I have on the line with, on my screen share. Okay, I mean, it doesn't sound, it's probably not JCASC related. Um, pretty sure. And I've checked the, I checked the variable name uh, in case it was a, it has a typo, but it doesn't seem to. I think I think JKS will substitute it to be an empty string if it can't find it. So it's probably I, I, I'm not I think it does that. So it's probably my understanding is that that variable is not defined. Yes, so it's literally uh, JKS just take it because it has different three ways of using the base sixty four method inside environment. Um, it can use a read the content of a file and, and base64 it, or a string, or it will unreference a variable. So there, there is something weird. Yeah. Sorry, we back to, we sidetracked. Uh, I, just in case it was a well-known behavior, I don't know. So we have something weird, and we need to change to fix that because it's slowing down Hervé. I feel I feel like it'll be a typer somewhere. Yeah, I'll double check. Uh, sure. The <laughs> For sure, but yeah, we can find it. Um, but yeah, outside that credential issue, almost there. So good job, yep. Hervé. Um, next topic, unless you have a question or something else. Hmm. So update CLI. So great work, Stefan, on uh, adding more update CLI tracking on more dependencies. Uh, we have Ashikop Tools, which has a bigger uh, which has been updated recently. And the most interesting part is Kubernetes management is now tracking the AMI for the EC2 agents that we recently added on release.ci and uh, infra.ci. That should allow us to build using Docker engine on virtual machines. And that should allow us to use the same labels for both CI Jenkins IO and our Kubernetes Jenkins controller. So in the future, we should be able to shrink the pipelines to use only Jenkins file and migrate trusted to release. That will open this road. So thanks a lot for that work, uh, Stefan. You're welcome. Private AKS cluster. I haven't done anything. I was in day off, but that's my top priority for this week. Uh, focusing on the Groovy pipeline library for Terraform management and then reinitialize the Azure repository like the digital ocean uh, that Hervé is working on. So we can create a private cluster and move at least in CI and release CI with them behind the VPN. We had a weird error on service mirror Jenkins IO. Uh, the error was said, hey, bad certificate, except that we never used mirrors with HTTPS. That was the whole reason for migrating from mirrors Jenkins IO in a virtual machine in Amazon to get Jenkins IO with mirror bits inside uh, Azure to have TLS because the 
tooling used for that legacy mirror Jenkins IO web service wasn't supporting HTTPS. So we don't know how the, uh, the probe, the Datadog probe could have worked before that day, but it was erroring. We removed the probe, but that starts the question of decommissioning the service mirror Jenkins IO. Um, there is an issue to be created. Thanks, Tim. That's a good point that you underline. That's worth it to communication, at least a blog post and the Twitter, before really starting to decommission. And as Hervé underlined also, we might want to search for the references of mirrors.jenkins.io inside our own code base in Jenkins Infra, uh, at least test harness, and the uh, pipeline libraries, and change them to get Jenkins.io. So at least they will use the correct service. Not sure. There are several references mm -hmm. to mirror.jenkins.io on, on Jenkins CI uh, uh, organization too. I don't know if we should put a uh, name alias to keep uh, mirror.jenkins.io or to change this uh, URL there too. That's a discussion that would have been be, that would have need to happen inside the issue for that decommissioning. But yes, you're correct. Should we change on client side, server side? But another word on rating the Jenkins.io. We have Jeremy Playout from CloudBees that started to work um, on to take again the work that gave in and maybe others started one year ago at least. The goal is to migrate the service rating Jenkins.io from the tiny virtual machine on Amazon where it's running today into Kubernetes. So it took the work that Gavin pointed at us uh, to have a Helm chart that he was able to run locally. There is a pull request that open that we have to review. The next step will be to prepare the installation of that Helm chart on our prod public cluster. Attention point for the infra people, Rating need a database. It's a PostgreSQL database. I don't remember where it hosted. I assume it's on AWS as for today. Yes. Need to be checked. Okay. Yes. So we might want to create a new PostgreSQL database inside Azure, at least manually, and I will import it on Terraform later when it will work. But we need a PostgreSQL, and there will be a migration phase. We will have to uh, dump the SQL from AWS and insert it inside the new database. The reason is because uh, accessing a web service on Azure, accessing a PostgreSQL database on AWS, not only it will be slow with latency, but also we will have to tweak finally the IP allow to connect to the database. Given the, the tiny amount of data inside the database, better to migrate it directly all on Azure and remove all these resources on AWS. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, so thanks, Jeremy. Jeremy is uh, out, so we will continue. It's not a priority topic, but uh, uh, on background, that's interesting. An external contributor doing that for us, that's really nice. It's uh, four, so I propose, unless you want to bring another topic, that we delay the other topics to next week. Uh, is there any prior topic that uh, we forgot about or do you want to speak about right now today? No. Okay, so thanks a lot everyone for your work. I'm gonna update and prepare the note for next week, move everything we didn't treat it today and publish everything on this course once the recording will be available. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Have a good day. Bye Take bye. care.